And joining me now is the chairperson of the Indian Overseas Congress, uh, Sam Petroda joins me. Appreciate your joining us there from Chicago. Sam Petroda, you've uh, put out a few tweets uh, on what's been happening uh, over Rahul Gandhi's comments in the United Kingdom. I want your first reaction, though, uh, to the fact that in the last three days, the government has been demanding an apology from Rahul Gandhi. How do you respond to the government's demand that Rahul Gandhi apologize for his remarks in the United Kingdom because you were there by his side right through? Rahul Gandhi did not say anything that require any kind of apology. In a democracy like ours, if someone feels very strong about something, he has all the rights to say it. The fact is that what he said has been twisted. Lies are being propagated. Misinformation is in main demand. And this has become a way of life in India. Unfortunately, it happens most of the time with Rahul Gandhi. So I was a little bit concerned because he didn't say any of those things. Of course, he said then that Indian democracy is going through challenge. I also believe that mainly because our institutions are captured. You look at media, the amount of time media spends on trivial issues with Rahul Gandhi is absolutely out of proportion. The entire national media gets ganged up on an issue in a country where there are larger issues like economy, inflation, unemployment, education, all the promises government made. What happened to it? There is no debate on any of these real issues. But nation is obsessed for three days on what Rahul Gandhi did not say. Rahul Gandhi never invited any foreign yeah. country to participate. Rahul Gandhi very clearly said that this is our challenge and we will deal with it. So what is the sense in lying, twisting? I just don't get it. And then the can question I, of apology. There is no can I, can apology. I just stop you for a moment, Mr. Can I just stop you for a moment because, uh, you know, there were a few remarks of Rahul Gandhi that raised a controversy on this so-called foreign intervention. He says in an in a address in Hounslow to the Indian diaspora, uh, the surprising thing is so-called defenders of democracy, which are the United States and European countries, seem to be oblivious that huge chunks of the democratic model in India have come undone, which is a real problem. The opposition is fighting that battle. The battle is for huge democratic people. Uh, the opposition has placed the vision on the table. Now, this is being interpreted by the BJP to suggest he is calling for intervention from the That's US and European countries. Uh, in, in another speech, he... First of all, it's a wrong interpretation. But as far as I'm concerned, Indian democracy is global public good. Indian democracy should be everybody's concern. If democracy fails in India, democracy will have huge impact. So this is not about India. It is not about Hindutva. It is about Manavta. We need to worry about the world first. I am more concerned about planet and people than power and profits. I think we are at a point in the history today but but mr petroda but mr petroda warming. could but mr petroda could rahul gandhi have been a little bit could mr rahul gandhi have been a little bit more nuanced when you are dealing with no, sensitive issues so. for example no, in cambridge so. there was a sikh gentleman I in front of him so and he said all. sikhs are being reduced to second class citizens when you make these comments could you be more yeah. nuanced it's okay to make that comment you are a democratic country i mean what is the problem if one feels that way it's perfectly normal you can disagree with him. That's okay. But That's you seem to be overly negative. 
you are seen to no, be constantly not, negative and dissing on your own country on foreign soil. So what's the problem though? I mean, what what is this idea that you can't say anything against your country on foreign soil? Who came up with this concept? The world is everybody's. So this whole idea that you can't go to foreign country and say something, you can say whatever you want to say. What's the problem? I just don't get it. Where is the problem? You should be. You could be more nuanced instead of making sweeping remarks. You, you know, democracy. Democracy okay. in India is that's messy and chaotic. But to say that may, a democracy is finished. Of course, I also feel that democracy is not finished. Democracy is it an overstatement? Is democracy is attacked, and someone feels that it is finished. That's okay. That's their judgment. You can say I don't agree with your judgment. That's perfectly normal. But the attack after attack in an organized way with media support is what I'm concerned about. Okay. Poor guy can't even scratch. If you scratch, you will say, why did you scratch in foreign countries? I mean, let's be reasonable. Let's be civilized. Let's give him some space. Poor fellow has no space. Why is everyone so obsessed? with what he says, how he said, every word of it, every sentence of it, every tone of it. He's also a human being. He should have the same freedom you and I have. Of course, he's a leader of a party, one of the key leaders in the country. We all respect that. But at the end of the day, we are all human beings. I also say this in America about India. That doesn't mean I'm against mm -hmm. India. I'm not nationalist. I say things about America, being in America. Nobody has ever asked me anything. I've said lots of negative things about America. In America, abroad, I am a human being first. I'm more concerned about humanity than about nationality. So but now isn't, you don't have to agree with me. But isn't, uh, you know, that's, is, but, but isn't, but, but, but Sam Petroda, isn't it more important for a leader who aspires to the highest office in India to offer his own vision, his own positive narrative of India, rather than constantly focusing on the negatives and bashing Narendra Modi. That surely Rahul that Gandhi is, has more your, to offer as to what the Congress Raj, Party and he stands for, rather than focus on Mr. Modi all the time. Rajdeep, that is his option. And this is your opinion, which is fine. I respect that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, the point which I'm coming to Sam Petroda is Rahul Gandhi uh, goes to uh, uh, the United Kingdom and makes observations which at times can be challenged. For example, when he says, I'm That's not allowed okay. to speak so at all in Parliament, That's he just gave a one-hour speech on the... Uh, uh, no, hmm. right there. The observation can be challenged. So, so what you are so saying, we can have a what you are saying in a, a democracy, uh, let, let me understand what you are saying. Sure. Let, let, you know, what you are saying Very is simple. that you, me, you are calling for a debate. You are calling for... No, you're, you're hmm. calling for a debate, a dialogue, a conversation. You're saying every time I say something critical of you, doesn't mean I'm anti-India, doesn't mean I of need course. to apologize to you. Am I correct? Of course. Let me give you an example, okay? During last election, mm -hmm. I said something it was completely twisted, misrepresented, media went wild. Nobody came and asked me, Mr. Petroda, what did you mean by that? This is the state of communication in India. You go talk to any civil society people, NGOs, they will tell you, we are being harassed. There are unnecessary court cases on us. ED has been sent to us. And I can give you a list of 50 of those. That means civil society is not functioning well. Isn't that a concern in a democracy? Of course it's a concern in democracy. How can I not speak about it? That doesn't mean I'm anti anybody. I'll give you another example. Very simple example, personal example. There was a Padyatra in New York. 
I participated in it because it was Indian Overseas Congress had organized. Because of my health, I don't take long walk, but I did walk about a kilometer and a half. It was pretty successful. Next day, within 24 hours, I get a letter from ED saying, when did you become member of the Congress party? What is your designation? I wrote to them. I said, why do you have to know that? Immediately, I got a response back. Say, according to law 879-37----whatever. Dash, 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 I said, look, I don't understand what you're saying. It is basically intimidation, harassment. You have to be at the other end to really realize what happens. And when these kinds of things go on... M Mr. Petroda... You think that the democracy... Uh, uh, Mr. Petroda, the, is... the point that I'm coming at, you know, I, I, I would agree that Rahul Gandhi has every right to express his views. But when you express your views and you're a person of stature, you have to be careful of every word because every word will be picked up by someone or the other. That's so as I said, right. when you okay, refer the audience the to Sikhs day, being, uh, becoming second class community, there will be a backlash. That we will see. The point is, we all have right to say how we feel mm -hmm. in a democracy. Don't put your interpretation as the only interpretation. We are all human beings. We live in a democratic society. We have a view. If you don't agree with my view, I respect that. But don't gang up on me. Don't ask 50 people to immediately go on TV and start attacking me. Don't have an orchestrated, well-organized, well-oiled machine released on you. I think that is the issue I'm concerned about. It's okay for you to have a conversation with me. And it's okay for you to disagree with me. I respect that. Why should you and I agree on everything? Let's have civilized discourse. So, so in, Let's not have personal attacks all the time so, so you, on every issue at every minute. The, the, you know, the, the government would say Rahul Gandhi uh, has also constantly attacked Prime Minister Modi. So it's become very bitter, personal and there's enmity. And that's the problem why Indian democracy has become dysfunctional. In Parliament, for the example, the two is, sides Prime simply don't a, see eye to eye. That's the real that's problem. Okay. No, I don't think that's a real problem at all. Okay, I think you're wrong. Prime Minister is a Prime Minister of a country. Every citizen has a right to criticize Prime Minister. There's nothing wrong with it. Because he is, at the end of the day, Prime Minister of everybody. And not a group of people. He needs to represent the entire country. And if somebody criticizes him, Prime Minister should be big enough mm -hmm. to take criticism. I worry when Prime Minister talks on public media the way he talks sometimes. To me, that's not dignified way for a prime minister to attack somebody. Others can attack prime minister. Remember that. But prime minister of my country is a prime minister mm -hmm. for everybody. And it's okay for me to criticize him. He has to have broad shoulders to take a lot of criticism and not go into tutu meme. When Prime Minister does that, it bothers me. So, so in conclusion, uh, Sam Petroda, you'd say that Rahul Gandhi uh, has no reason to have any regrets or apologize. He didn't say anything. And he you didn't believe say anything. that actually what he's done? He didn't say anything. Just go look at his video. You, know, you Just keep examine saying it. it. You may have an interpretation, but that's your interpretation. You are entitled mm -hmm. to that. I respect that. But my interpretation is different. Okay? So calm down. 
right lower the temperature so sam petroda deep breath you know you're you're calling for people to calm down to lower the temperature just tell me one last thing is someone who's very close to rahul gandhi how much has this affected rahul gandhi the person uh, you've known him closely over the years uh, you know uh, there are those who try to project him as more of a now a party ideologue not a day to day politician is that part of the problem how much of all of this well, has affected no him as a person there is no problem first of all when you say there is part of the problem you are predefining that there is a problem and this is a piece to it there is no problem he is what he is i think yatra has really helped him a lot in terms of connecting with people in terms of understanding what the real problems of the people are compared to what media projects there is a disconnect between media politics big business and people on the ground people on the ground are more concerned about unemployment inflation growth people on the ground want their life to be little better while media and everybody is on completely different platform they have a different conversation going on and which is true in many countries it is not just true in india you go to us you will find the same thing media is can, debating geopolitical issues while people I? are worried about inflation media is discussing what is happening in ukraine can i while can i just ask saying, Look, yeah go ahead one can i just ask you one final question you asked you know you said at the outset you believe that why is everyone obsessed with rahul gandhi may i offer a reason obsessed with rahul gandhi because a he is the face at the moment of the biggest opposition party even today and there's a sense that the bjp sees rahul gandhi as their perfect opponent someone whom they can target as a fifth generation dynast and therefore you they know, I in a way that. are sort of playing up that anything the... any any remark that rahul gandhi makes i understand that but i think it is one thing to attack him in a sort of organic way is another thing to attack him in a well civilized well organized well sort of structured highly controlled media it's okay for someone to come and say rahul said this and i didn't agree with it this is okay but when 500 people in the same day on every television channel goes and says that that bothers me i hope you understand the difference okay and this is no, what I has been going the difference but could rahul gandhi be a little bit more could could rahul gandhi be a little bit more do, do you that think rahul gandhi to needs decide. to be a little bit more careful no, and a little bit more rehearsed possibly in the remarks no. that you make when you go abroad you've that got to be more rehearsed no i don't think so i think that's for him to decide first of all not for you and me to decide it's okay you can advise him you are entitled to do that okay but ultimate decision has to be his and then you can make your judgment again which is perfect and normal So you remain confident that Rahul Gandhi is someone who is here for the lamba race. You're saying don't underestimate Look, Rahul been Gandhi there. as Look, someone been who's been there. very close to him. You're saying he has been there all along. He may have a different style than many of the traditional politicians are, have. In India, people think to be a politician you have to be conniving, you have to be manipulative. you have to be harsh that's not what rahul gandhi is and i know rajiv gandhi that's not what he was so it's a matter of character but How is part of the politics? problem mr petroda but is part of the problem sir but is part of the problem so that he carries all, all, all the baggage of the congress over the, the years the corruption no, no. over the years the Gandhi, nepotism Gandhi. all of that will come to affect rahul gandhi he can't escape the baggage i understand but the point is let's not start with part of the problem because then you have defined the problem yourself okay so this language 
has to change in our discourse. Okay. I see discourse on TV, on India, on and off. And sometimes I wonder, why are these people talking like that? Why isn't there a normal conversation on national TV? What would our children learn from this? I'm more concerned about next generation. If whole generation grew up with this kind of discourse on national media, it will have a huge impact on the future generation. People believe this is the way to have a normal conversation. I'm really worried about next generation. I don't think we understand and, the implication of if, what is going on. And we need to really change that. But and, I don't and, see any sign of changing. And if, and, if what, and what if those who are listening to you today, Sam Petroda, say Sam Petroda represents an old India, the old Latians elite. There is a new India and the new India has no time for this old India that keeps looking down upon India in some way or the there other. There is no Sam Petroda is, hold on, Sam Petroda is part. Sam Petroda is part of new India. Sam Petroda even today invents. Sam Petroda is on top of everything. Just because I am 80, don't think that I am old. I spend at least 16 hours a day no, I'm working not saying in terms of day. age. I'm, I'm not saying in terms no, of age. So the old Latians elite, don't talk sir, I didn't age. say in terms of age. I no, said old Latians elite versus that. a new India. I Raji, didn't talk about your age, sir. No, sir, not at all. Not at all. Okay. The so argument which is being made, I'll just suggest a minute. The argument which is being made is that there is a Latian elite that which has not adjusted to the modified India. No, what I'm saying is modified India has to be defined in terms of employment, in terms of growth, in terms of democracy, human rights. All of these issues are important. How do you tell me that I'm old India? Just tell me why, why did you say that? What gave you right to say that? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. That's the that's the comment the the commentary which I've been listening to in recent times is that the that Rahul Gandhi, those around no, no, him represent the India of privilege of the past. No, no, no. no. You are this talking is a new about India. Sam Petroda. No, you are talking about Sam Petroda right now. Not Rahul Gandhi. Mm -hmm. You said Sam Petroda. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the kind of discourse. Yes. Okay, that we run into problem with. You said Sam Petroda represents old politics. You didn't say Rahul Gandhi. What mm -hmm. what brought to that brought mm -hmm. you to that conclusion? I want to understand. How did you come to the conclusion that Sam Petroda is old politics? When everything I do, I've just written a book on redesigning the world. Is it old politics? I it is know. looking at the world very differently. I work on AI. I work on blockchain. I work on all of these things. And you think I'm old politics? I'm disappointed. Right. So is that is that part of the is that part of the problem? Is that part of the problem? I use the word again. Because Sam Petroda, no, all, no of us, all just, of us no, no, are now looking at the world me. in very black and no. just a minute, sir. In black and white polarized term, the world has become polarized, and we are trying to fit people into particular buckets, and that's the problem, which is why there is no dialogue, no, 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 no. conversation, the problem, and the controversy no, the over Rahul Gandhi reflects that. No, the problem is that the world needs to be redesigned. The design of the world which was created 80 years ago by U.S., which gave birth to U.N., World Bank, IMF, NATO, WTO. That design doesn't work anymore because of hyperconnectivity. Hyperconnectivity, which is supposed to connect us, is basically disconnecting us. Hyperconnectivity, which is supposed mm -hmm. to enhance democracy, is hurting democracy. Hyperconnectivity that is supposed to change governance, decentralize, mm -hmm. is centralizing governance. 
these are the issues of concern to me. And then someone, a friend like you, turns around and says, Sam Petroda is old politics. I don't agree. But you, have, you are entitled to say it. I have no quarrel. Okay, you are entitled to say that. No, you because that's your view. No, I think but you. I, I think got, you responded. I got, up, I got sir, worried. You are, and and you have every right. You have, you, so, sure. sir, you have every right to respond. So let me ask you in conclusion: if you if you were to advise Rahul Gandhi now in the present political milieu, would you advise him to do anything differently, or do you believe he's on the right track? He is matured enough, intelligent enough to make his own choices. I would not advise him on anything. I have no business advising him. I can talk to him. I can express my views. Ultimately, Rahul Gandhi is capable, qualified to make his own choices. And one final question, how does Sam Petroda keep himself 80 years young? Sam Petroda likes to talk to friends like you. Sam Petroda likes to work. I have no other hobbies. I don't go golf. I don't do anything. I do what I love to do, which is work. And I'm privileged to have many friends who make make me feel good and i must tell you you're also one of those i admire what you do and okay you are my friend and i respect what you do and you and i can disagree on issues that doesn't have anything to do with our friendship thank you sam petroda as always as i said pleasure talking to you thank you so much you for, for joining me there from chicago this morning in chicago evening in india thank you thank you